Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Jankila's lectures. Today's lecture is about dilution and concentrations. So what is dilution and concentrations formula? It's basically the formula that it's used when there is a prescription or if you're solving a math problem in NAPLEX or in class that involves concentration and quantity. So let's say you have a concentration and quantity given in a question or it's an order in the prescription and in the pharmacy or in the question, there is no new concentration or the quantity is not as available in comparison to the prescription. So let's get into the formula and understand how this formula is used. So the formula, it's basically Q1 times C1 equal Q2 times C2. So what is a Q1, what is C1, and what is Q2, and what is C2? So Q, Q is basically the quantity. And this is the given quantity, okay? So this is, we can refer to this as the old quantity, old Q. Okay, and C, C is basically the concentration. So this is concentration. Okay, so that's what C is. And C1, it's basically the old concentration. Therefore, Q2 is basically, so we can come over here, Q2 is the new quantity and the C2 is the new concentration. So a question may give you these two and maybe in the pharmacy you have the quantity and you're looking for the new concentration and vice versa. They may give you these two and you have the concentration, but the quantity is not enough. So you gotta figure what's the new quantity for this prescription or for this question. So there are three things that I want you to keep in mind when solving such questions. Number one, the units must be the same. So the unit with uh, the quantity and quantity, they must be the same. So if this is in milliliter, Therefore, this one here must be in milliliter. If this is in liter, then this one needs to be in liter as well. So units is very important. They are the same units in order to have the correct answer. That's one thing to keep in mind. And the same thing with concentration. So concentration, keep in mind, previous lecture I went over the two form concentration can comes into. So one of them, it's basically like this form, so this is number one. Number two it would be, let's say, a number over 100. Okay, and it can be milliliter or gram, either one of them. So these are the two ways concentration can come into, okay? Another thing that I want you to keep in mind when solving this question is, what is the ingredients? This is the very important part of each question. When you're looking at ingredients in a question, what is the ingredient? Is it a pure medication? If it's a pure medication, then the concentration, because it's pure, there is nothing else with it, okay? The concentration in this case, it's going to be 100%. Keep this in mind. If you see a question that is given, that has quantity one and concentration one, but it doesn't have the concentration two and they're asking for a quantity, but the question says it's a pure ingredient. Mean C2 in this case, so if we were to look into this and let's say we have Q1, C1 equal Q2, C2 in this case, right? 
So we are given these two. These two components, they're given in the question. And the question is basically asking for quantity two. So this is the unknown. Okay, this is X. Here for concentration, the question says ingredient is pure. So in this case, this would be 100%. Okay, that's something to keep in mind if you were to see this in a question or in a prescription. Another thing that I want you to keep in mind is if there is a diluent. So what do I mean by that? For example, if seeing a question that says this prescription or this question doesn't have any medication, there is no ingredients in it, there is a diluent. For example, if they mention alcohol, lanolin, if they mention inert base, lactose, aquaphor, or ointment base, any one of these, it's basically the concentration for any one of these, it's going to be zero. So the, do you see the big difference between pure and diluent here? It's going to be zero, zero percent. So here, if we were to take this example in comparison to two and three, the difference in between them, it's going to be, so let's say we have the same thing just like here over here. So we have Q1, C1 equal Q2, C2, right? So we are given these two components just like in number two, and we are given, we are actually, the question is asking for quantity two, the new quantity, so this is X, and they're looking, and we, in the question we're having, we have given a diluent, okay? There is no pure medication, there is nothing. So in this case, this would be 0%. Therefore, this whole section, will be zero. So whatever the question is given over here, the first quantity and the concentration, that would be your answer in this question. Because C2 is basically zero in this case. All right, now we have an understanding of what dilution, dilution and concentration formula is. Let's get into some questions to have a better understanding on how to approach this equation and use it during questions or if you're working in a pharmacy. So question number one says, prescription asks for 500 milliliter of A50%. So we have number one, let's keep in mind, when you're trying to solve these questions, always write the formula. First, uh, first step is to write the formula. So let's write this formula over here. So we have Q1, this is the quantity number one or the old quantity, which is over here, it's 500, so this is Q1, okay? Another way you can just label them on the question if you can handwrite them, or if not, if you can take notes, so that's another way of doing it. And then we are looking for C2 concentration one, so 50%, it's concentration one, equal, so we're given the concentration one and quantity one, and yet the pharmacy only have 60%. 60%, this is concentration two. So how many milliliter, so this is quantity two, and this is unknown here, this is the X in this case. So we have Q2, C2, and the unknown in this case is quantity two. This is X in this case. They're looking for an ML of 60%, so this is C2 over here, needed for this prescription. So basically we just need to plug in the information. So let's look into this. So Q1, it's basically 500 milliliter in this case, multiplying by C1, which is 50%. Notice that the, the sign or the units, it's ML over here. So on this side, we must have an ML as well. So Q2, it's an unknown, so we're going to keep it as Q2, and then times C2, which is 60%. Okay, so the answer here must be in ML, because that's what we're looking for, and we know that we have percentage over here, we have percentage over here, so they're equivalent in terms of Z units. So if we were to multiply this, so basically this will turn out to be So if you were to multiply 500 ml times 50% divided by 
if we divide both sides by 60%, in this case, percentage goes with percentage and we are left with ML only. So if you were to plug in this in the calculator, we're gonna end up with 416.6 ml or 417 ml. So this is the answer to this question. Notice that we have an ml over here, which is exactly the same thing as the first quantity, which was an ml as well. And that's what the question is asking anyway. Now let's move into question number two. Question number two says, how many ml, so we're looking for ml. So let's first of all label this question. So how many ml of 10, first of all, let's write the, actually the equation. So we have Q1 times C1 equal Q2 times C2. So how many milliliters, so we're looking for a milliliter, so we're looking for a quantity of 10%, so this is, so this is C1, okay? Let's see. So how many milliliter Q1 C1 solution must be used to make one liter? So we have concentration one. We do not have a quantity one. So this one here is X. In this case, this is X. We do have this one here, which is down there. And solution must be used to make one liter. Notice here the unit is different. It's not in milliliter. Here we're asking in milliliter, but we're given liter. So we need to do a conversion before that. And I made up the number really easy for this question just to make it, you know, simple conversion. But in exams or in reality, numbers can be a little bit different than these and you may use a calculator for that. So we have a quantity of one liter. So this is Q2 of, and this is C2. Okay, so let's see here. So if you would to apply, to apply this formula, basically from here we can see that, so C, Q1, it's unknown, so we're gonna keep it as Q1, multiplying by C1, which is 10%, equal, we have Q2, which is one liter, and one liter, so if you were to do it over here, one liter, is basically 1,000 milliliter, okay? So here we gotta replace this with 1,000 milliliter times 0.01%. Now, if I divide both sides by 10%, so if you divided this side by 10%, so, and this side here by 10%, in this case, to get rid of this one with this one goes away, and then the percentage goes with percentage, okay? And if we were to multiply 1,000, okay, by 0 0.01, we're gonna end up with 10, and 10 over 10, so here, if I were to do this, it's gonna end up 10 over 10, so 10 milliliter over 10, and the answer here would be one milliliter. That's the answer to this question. So make sure the units are exactly the same on both sides in order to be able to solve the question. Question number three says, how many milliliters of water, so we're looking for a milliliter as well, so we're looking for a quantity, okay, of water, need to be added. This is a key word in this question. So this is a little bit harder than question number two and number one. And there is added, so we're gonna just star this. This is a keyword, added, okay? Keep that in mind. To two cups, oh, we're given two cups now, of 5%, so this is basically a quantity. So, let's see here. This is a quantity, and this is a concentration. In order to make a 2%, so this is a concentration. So we're looking for Q2, okay? So we're looking how many milliliter, okay? Quantity, this is Q2, we're looking for this. And we're given, this is Q1, this is C1. 
And over here, we have a C2 over here. So this is C2 given. So let's go back to the equation. Equation says Q1 times C1 equal Q2 times C2. So now we're given, what is the Q1? Q1 is two cups. What are two cups? So basically, we need to know this. I have included all the conversion in previous lectures. If you haven't seen it, please go ahead and view that lecture and I will leave the link in the description as well just for you to, in order to go over these conversions. So two cups, what is two cups? So one cup, let's do this. One cup is basically 236.5 milliliter. Okay, one cup. So two cups is basically multiplying this by two, which be, this is 473 milliliter, okay? This is what two cups are equal to. So this is concentration, this is quantity one, okay? So this is Q1. So we're gonna plug this over here. So we have 473 milliliter. So this is quantity one. Concentration one is 5% over there times five, and this is percent, equal quantity two, which is unknown, we do not know what it is, but here is the key point, it says add it to cups two, which means over here, this is added over here, this is a key point, the reason why it's a key point, because we need to add it to this, which means it's quantity two would be x plus, 473 milliliter. This is a quantity too, okay? The reason why it's like this, it's because we're asking the question, how many milliliter, in addition to the two cups, I need to make this 2% concentration. That's basically what it means. And here, multiplying by C2, which is 2%. So how do we solve this? So number one, step number one is basically to divide both sides by 2%. So if I were to divide both these sides, so dividing this side over 2% to get rid of this 2% and then to divide this side by 2%. So this one all over here, it's gonna be, let's divide this part by 2% and this part over here by 2%. So now this 2% goes away with two, these 2%. So what we have over here, X plus 473 milliliter equal to this whole thing over here. So what I need to do is basically, if I were to solve all this, okay? If I were to solve all this, what we're gonna end up with, we're gonna end up So it's going to be four, 73 milliliter times 5% over 2%. And we're gonna close this in parentheses. And then to get rid of this plus 473, we're gonna minus 473 from each side. So to get rid of this, we're gonna minus this side 473 and this side 473. So this, this 473, it's going to move on this side and it's going to be minus four, seven, three. And this would equal X. This would be X over here, and this would be quantity number two. So if you were to plug in this all in a calculator, I've done that already, you should have an answer of, so this whole thing should give you, it's going to be, 709.5 milliliter. So this is Q2. This is quantity number two, and this is the answer to this question. So this is it for this video. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.